Epiploic appendages. What are they? It's where it comes from, what it does. Why is it doing what it's doing? Get it out of my face. So I've covered epiploic appendages and epiploic appendagitis before, but epiploic appendages are these little fat outpouchings or pedunculated fat along the colon wall. Usually there's two rows on the ascending colon, two rows on the descending colon, and one row on the transverse colon. There's usually 50 to 100 of them. They are covered by serosa and they're usually supplied by one to two arteries and one to two draining veins. The length of these appendages vary from about five millimeters to about five centimeters. Now when one of these twist or become torsed, naturally the, the tissue suffers from ischemia, edema, and then necrosis. So when one of these twists you get what's called epiploic appendagitis. Now epiploic appendagitis is more common in obese males in their 40s, but it can happen to anyone, you know, naturally as a grown man or grown person accumulates more abdominal fat, more visceral fat, these things grow as well. So the bigger they get, the higher the chance it is for them to twist and become swollen. So on a coronal CT right here on the left side, you can see that there's some hypodense area there of the fat and some fat stranding. So the fat is a little bit brighter than the fat over here. And here in ultrasound, what you're going to see is the fat here. It's triangular in shape, echogenic. It's going to look at demitis. It's a very subtle finding. It's not something that you can easily miss it. Here's the descending colon right here. And right next to it is this area of fat that's echogenic. It's not really a hyperemic or anything like that. And here's a dual image with the measurement of the epiploic appendage or epiploic appendagitis. So again, very subtle. Uh, the echogenic or edematous fat is going to look very similar to the fat edema you would see in an appendicitis case. So this is a, also a great mimicker of appendicitis. However, if it's on the left lower quadrant and the patient does not have situs inversus, you know that this is a case that's not appendicitis. So the pain's on the right, good differential, easy differential is appendicitis is much more, much more common. I see about one of these a year. Uh, these can be easily missed. On the left side, uh, differential diagnosis could be a mental infarction or maybe a case of like diverticulitis or something like that. All right, so I hope this helps. Bye.